Hi guys and welcome back to a new video with the Omega Enthusiast. For today's video, I'm going to educate you guys on Omega Caliber 550 and all other calibers that are related or based off this movement. Once you have watched this entire video, you will have a good understanding about the 550 series the next time you see one of these movements in an Omega watch. They are one of the finest automatic movement and the last great vintage automatic movement from Omega. Let us look at this diagram showing the breakdown movement parts of Calibre 550. So as you can see, only a few parts are related to the previous automatic caliber under the 470 series. That I can educate you guys on a future episode since the 470 series caliber looks completely different from the 550 series caliber. This is what Calibre 550 will look like in color. It is a full rotor weight automatic movement. Caliber 550 is a 17 joules automatic movement with a center second. The movement diameter is 27.9 millimeters with a 4.5 millimeter thickness and has 19,800 beats per hour balance wheel rotation. Basically, the balance wheel will spin back and forth 19,800 times per hour. And the higher this number gets, the longer the watch will stay accurate after each full wind. Caliber 550 is a commonly used caliber throughout 1959 to late 60s for a majority of automatic models without the date feature, including a handful of Seamaster and imported models. The next caliber will be 551, which looks exactly like a caliber 550 except for the following parts. The train bridge will say 551 instead of 550. And since this is a chronometer caliber used by Constellation model, the automatic upper bridge will say adjusted in fire position and temperature. The jewel count on a caliber 551 will be 24 jewels instead of 17 jewels. These extra jewels are located on the upper and lower automatic bridges. Next up will be caliber 552, which is uh, the last non-date movement based off caliber 550. The train bridge will say 552, and since this is not a chronometer movement, the automatic bridge will not say adjusted in fire position and temperature. Basically, caliber 552 is the 24 jewel version of 550. Caliber 552 is very popular and are used in majority of Seamaster models without date. So what have you learned so far? Let us recap before we moved on. The next time you see a caliber 550 with 24 jewels, or a caliber 552 with 17 jewels, or a caliber 551 without adjusted in fire position and temperature on the automatic bridge, you will know that these are all incorrect and stay away from them. Next up is caliber 560, which is the date version of caliber 550. The train bridge will show 560. And on the dial side of the movement, there will be these extra calendar parts. Since this is a calendar movement, it will be thicker than the non-date version. That will also mean that the sweep second pinion, center wheel, cannon pinion, and owl wheels will also need to be a bit higher or longer. Sweep second pinion is for the second hand to sit on, cannon pinion is for the minute hand to sit on, and owl wheel, of course, is for the owl hand to sit on. Now that you know caliber 560 is the date version of 550, caliber 561 must be the date version for 551, and caliber 562 must be the date version for 552. Caliber 560, 561, and 562 exist until early 1966, until three other caliber replaced them, and they are caliber 563, 564, and 565. These three caliber are equivalent to the previous three, but they are the quick set date version introduced it in 1966 and lasted until early 1970. Caliber 563 has 17 jewels, which replaced caliber 560 and used it in many imported date watches. Caliber 564 is the chronometer quick set date movement with 24 jewel used it in many constellation watches and caliber 565 would be the quick set date version of 562. You will find that majority uh, of automatic date watches from late 1966 to early 1970s will house a 565 quick set date movement.
Are we good so far? Hope you guys are still on track. You can stop here and return later if you like. You have now learned 9 different Omega Caliber from the 550 series family. The next 3 will be Caliber 750, 751, and 752. And these are the day and date version of Caliber 563, 564, and 565. Once again, the sweep second pinion, the cannon pinion, center wheel, and our wheel will need to be taller or longer to compensate the extra day feature added on. Now that we've learned all the automatic caliber, it's time to move on to the manual caliber of the 550 series. The manual wine caliber will appear a little different since they do not require the automatic bridge and the automatic rotor. That means the remaining caliber that I will go through will only have 17 jewels. The first three caliber will be 600, 601, and 602. Caliber 600 first introduced it in 1960 and has the same swan neck balance regulator as Caliber 550. When Omega introduced it Caliber 601 in 1964, the swan neck balance regulator is replaced with a pointer regulator. Honestly, I find both versions to be just as accurate when you regulate the time. Caliber 602 on the other hand is a very rare movement, which appear exactly like a Caliber 601 but this is the chronometer version. Since a constellation does not exist in manual wine, Caliber 602 was made for a chronometer Geneve model in the late 1960s. These last three caliber will be 610, 611, and 613. Caliber 610 will be the date version of caliber 600. Caliber 611 will be the date version of caliber 601. However, 613 is not a chronometer date movement for caliber 602. Instead, caliber 613 is the quick set date version of 611. Now that you have learned all the movement based of caliber 550, Remember that if you see a pointer regulator on a caliber 600, you will know that someone has modified the movement. Before I end this video, there's one other thing I would like to point out. In 1969, Omega replaced the automatic weight or a rotor with a new design. That's the end of this video. Comment below and let me know how much you have learned from watching this video. Please support the channel on my Patreon account and make sure to hit on that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe. If you're looking to purchase a professionally serviced vintage Omega watch, website link is in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.